The tale of Wood Green was meant to be a tale of rags to riches. Haringey, one of the poorest boroughs in London, would arrange to be built in the heart of Wood Green a huge complex which would bring them untold wealth. The vision was of a 90-acre spread of offices, shops, an art centre and new housing. All this would bring in millions of pounds from new rates and rents, and it would go to the community, not, as so often, to property developers. But to pay for the building, the council had to go into business with private enterprise. The construction was to be paid for by the pension fund of the electricity industry. But it's another deal, this time with the pension fund of Unilever Limited, which has brought the council problems. A deal first struck between Haringey Council and the Unilever Fund seemed to give all the advantages to the commercial concern. Unilever were to pay £2 million for the land, but the cost of putting the site together in fact crept up to about £4 million, so the council had to find the extra money themselves. And in addition, Unilever stood to make each year about a quarter of a million pounds, at the very least a quarter of a million pounds, as their share of the rent income. The council, of course, stood to make a similar amount of money in rent, but they felt that they deserved more because they were giving the opportunity for the development in the first place. Do you think that the council has come off badly compared with the financial institutions? Oh, very badly. For putting in exactly the same amount of money, they're going to get exactly the same return but the council has put in very nearly all the entrepreneurial activity. We've had a complete team of council officers working on this now for seven or eight years. We should have a substantially better return than Unilever. Considering what you have put in, do you feel that the council is not getting enough back compared with Unilever, the financial enterprise? Yes, very much so. The council's leader agrees they did badly at first with Unilever, but claims they did better at a second attempt. I think we're not coming off as well as we had initially hoped, but I think we got very considerable concessions from this six months negotiation. And last, early last summer, the council accepted that this was the best deal we could get. But there was still an outcry, because Unilever still seemed poised to make anything between £64 million and £100 million over the period that the buildings were being leased. That, to many people, seemed a very handsome return for an investment of just £2 million. And so, in the end, Unilever offered to withdraw from the scheme in view of the bad publicity which they received. The council has had to look elsewhere for other finance to take the place of Unilever's £2 million. They went to the government to see if it could help them. Mr Ware, how did it go in the Department of Environment? Well, we had a very sympathetic reception. The minister put the problems of the government in the uh, economic climate there is and the, the pressure he's obviously under from the Chancellor and we, he listened fairly to our case of why we want a greater stake in what is developing in our own borough and uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't given us a no but he hasn't given us a yes. So the council still doesn't know where the money is coming from and while they ponder that there's turned out to be another sting in the tail of Wood Green. We're now driving along Mays Road but if the Wood Green scheme were built would in fact be driving along the ground floor of a John Lewis department store. Or at least that would have been the case, but it's not the case any longer because there's been a new blow dealt to the scheme. The John Lewis department store partnership have decided that they can't any longer go on with their involvement. According to their latest report, the partnership, and I quote, feels unable to agree that it should commit itself firmly now to the necessary building contract and borrowing the funds for that purpose. Now that gives the council a very big problem because they desperately need one of the big, well-known stores to be the centrepiece of their shopping area, especially because that kind of a store would bring in lots of other smaller businesses. And finding an alternative to John Lewis could be very difficult because already, just a hundred yards away, you already see all those big, well-known, familiar stores. Enticing another big store could prove impossible. With such mounting problems, can the council defend such property deals when it's the ratepayers' money at risk? Insofar as we're involved in a very large project with a lot of different interests in it, housing and uh, cultural developments, including a library and an art centre, as well as the shopping and offices, insofar as it's such, a develop, such an involvement, we need ourselves to be right in it to have a considerable say in what is to happen. Well, from beginning to end, We've got an excellent scheme which should provide Haringey with a very, very substantial improvement in financial terms and Haringey is a very poor borough. 
this has been put at risk because the wrong decisions were taken too quickly and without sufficient thought as to the future. Whoever is to blame, Wood Green's future still hangs in the balance and Haringey's ratepayers still don't know if those untold riches will ever start rolling in.